tell us what the Weinstein Clause is. Bonnie, basically it's an acknowledgement that when people are caught up in these sexual misconduct allegations, that costs a company money. And we know we've seen that with CBS, how much the shares have plunged the past couple of days since allegations were levelled at the CEO, Leslie Moonves. So this is a case of buyers trying to protect themselves when they're doing a deal by saying, hey, I'm going to pay you this much money to buy this company, but if I find out later down the track that somebody senior was involved in these kinds of allegations and that then hurts the company, then I'm allowed to get some of that money back. <laughs> um, and so I think the important thing here is that acknowledgement, and it's been going on for about six months now, uh, ever since the sort of in the light of the Weinstein allegations that came to light um, late last I year. Mean Nabila, it's an amazing story. I love it that you you have a quote saying the hashtag Me Too rep is what really they're being referred to now over the last six months. Are there certain industry groups that this is particularly targeted at? At the moment, it seems to have been something that swept up media in particular, but is this coming all pervasive around the whole of M&A? Yeah, look, we saw the uh, deal this week that Brookfield did for Forest City Realty, a $6.8 billion deal, a real estate deal. And this clause, this kind of a clause was included in that deal. We've seen other deals in the restaurant uh, industry, for example, when Barteca bought Del Fresco, uh, that's, a, that's a tapas chain, and they put that in as well. And they were quite specific in the, de in the dates that they referenced in that deal, saying that, you know, if, if there were allegations going back as far as 2008, 15, then they wanted guarantees against those. Is there gaps in due diligence here, though? Because it would seem like if you're going for a job in a C-suite, you'll have due diligence done on you back as far as you have records for. If <laughs> skeletons don't turn up then, why would they turn up in the future? And why haven't they been turning up? Well, that's the thing. I mean, we've seen instances where people have fabricated their CVs, for example, and they haven't been caught until, you know, quite a, a long way down the track, Bonnie. So I think it's about, as you say, it's about doing the proper due diligence. And, you know, we, uh, we had uh, John Waldron from Goldman Sachs quoted in the story. There was a panel uh, early this year at the Milken Conference where they talked about this and how the social due diligence is becoming more and more important as these issues come to light because as well as you know certain individuals that may have been affected it also talks to a culture at a place sometimes and if you're a company buying another company you want to be aware of what kind of a culture you're buying into and whether that you can integrate that into your business Yes, social due diligence, a new turn of phrase. Nabila, looking also at your story, 475 high-profile executives and employees have been accused of harassment over the last 18 months. I mean, that's a phenomenal number. Is it about just asking the question now as well as setting money aside? Oh, absolutely. And Caroline, that number, one of the things when I was writing the story that really struck me was that that number is updated daily. So just two days ago, wow. uh, it was like 468 or something like that. So just even in the past two days, about nine or ten people have been added to that list and of that we can say that about 250 of them have already left those companies so yeah as you say it's really about asking those questions and there's a phenomenal statistic that I would like you to explain to us in your story as well Nabila companies have got faster about getting rid of the problems in their company yeah and you know what that that makes absolute sense right but I think they're, they're realizing now that you have to act quickly to stem some of that loss in I value. I mean, it would have seemed to me to be obvious from the start, but I guess it takes companies <laughs> a while to just, instead of crisis managing, actually, you know, manage what the crisis is. Exactly. So that number of peri the time period has gone down from about six weeks to about two weeks now. But you can also see why boards would want to do the due diligence themselves to investigate the claims too. And this is what we're seeing at CBS. You know, the board is now putting together an investigative kind of uh, team, including a an outside law firm and independent directors to look into these allegations because the thing is some in some of these instances when it's the CEO or somebody really high up they really matter to the financials of the company so you don't want to be too hasty either. Yeah.